All right, what are we at? Ep- episode number 60, I believe this is. Guys, this was another fun one. Another amazing Kansas City artist. Uh, he goes by the name Doodle Dude. And Doodle, and then Dude, D-O-O-D. Uh, Doodle Dude Art on Instagram. And then Doodle Dude dot com and this guy was so much fun super cool super chill really smart dude um and if you guys uh kansas city people out there if you've been down to parlor the that restaurant that has like seven restaurants inside of it that really cool wall that's on the top that's that's all artsy and colorful that's his artwork you guys have seen pictures of it i promise you and he keeps doing amazing things. He brought me a really cool piece of artwork that he made himself. I really want you guys to check it out. I really hope you guys enjoy this episode. Please so uh, please go subscribe to his stuff and find him. And if I'm asking for subscribing stuff, hey, subscribe to me, to uh, Instagram, Neanderthal Pod. Subscribe to the podcast, like, review, make all that stuff happen for me. You know how it is. I have to ask for something. Uh, episode 60, I think that's what I'm at. I didn't look beforehand, but let's, let's go with that doodle dude. Without further ado, here we go. Welcome to the Inner Talk Podcast. We'll know topic is off limits. Now here's your host, my daddy, and Roy the Soul. Thank you for coming to the podcast. Boom, twat, boom. All right, in three, two, one. Here we are, and Indiana Talk Podcast is back with Evan Doodle Dude. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much for being here, first of all. And uh, see, so you've been here for just a few minutes, and I can only tell you're like, a crazy exceptional human being appreciate it yeah what do you say to that right you're a humble guy yeah i'm trying to keep it quiet yeah don't be quiet on the podcast you gotta <laughs> use your be. voice man you gotta get up on that be. use that mic you were just saying you were wanting to get your voice out there that this will be do. interesting you've got your instagram stuff blowing up that i do yeah i um uh, most of the stuff that I do is kind of behind the scenes, and uh, I've never really had the channel to get my, you know, thoughts out my there. thoughts out there and my theory and whatnot. So thoughts. It's and been theory. nice. I've had one interview, but I never did anything with it. So, what do you mean? What, you, what was the interview? What Someone just came. In, they did like a quick profile on me, but it was like in the early stages of their business. Okay. So I think that they, <clears throat> they were still kind of developing what they were doing too. Oh, right so on. it wasn't like. You know, it was like a one minute Instagram clip. Oh, yeah. so that doesn't count. No. Well, welcome. I'm glad to have, I can't believe it. Honestly, I can't believe I'm your first yeah. podcast or interview. And hopefully, here you are. Of hopefully the, the first of many. Hope, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get you set up with a couple other uh, yeah. local podcasts. Um, Kansas City knows you. Yeah. Right? A decent amount, yeah. I, I mean, mean, everybody sees your stuff all over the place. I mean, that's how I found out about you is... I was on a, you know, like a Tinder date or something like that. I went yeah. to Parlor. Yeah. Great yeah. place in Kansas City <laughs> to take a first date. Right. There's something for everybody there. The drinks are great. Yeah. And, and it's just a cool spot. You mm-hmm. look you look cool when you take a date no, there. Yeah. The 20 to 30, you know, 40. 40 is like the top of the age bracket there. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's me, my man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just holding I've on. It, I'm it just holding funny. on. It is funny. Like the age gap or the age demographic there is pretty like you know 50 and under yeah honestly Mm -hmm. it's a hip spot hipster (laughs) yeah it is a little it is got a little hipster vibe to it but i like it yeah um and so anyways like every single person does they get their picture taken with that cool art piece that that wall that's got Mm -hmm. all the bright colors and interesting i don't know what to call them you call them doodles obviously just just interesting uh you can't put your finger. I'd say on like it. design elements. Like um, I used to say doodles, but that word has such like a uh, hobby connotation to mm-hmm. it that I eventually switched more into just like saying like it's you know my my design style or you know I always call them like 
in that picture. Like I add in like I I will draw an environment and then I'll add in like my design elements, um, and it helps just make it seem less like a hobby. Okay, if that makes sense. A little bit. In a, in a way, I don't know. But did, did it start off like that? It did. Uh, well, I mean, it was more like my sketchbook work because I was going to school to be. Like, I mean, everybody doodles. Yeah, yeah exactly. Everybody. That's what I mean. I mean, not our, like I don't have yeah. any kind of talent. So like, at I was all. always doing that in like my sketchbooks, my notebooks at school and whatnot, and mm-hmm. uh, that was part of the reason that I decided on following that as like the style I wanted to pursue, was just because it was something I knew I enjoyed. I've um, never seen anybody. Yeah kind of do that style before is that unique to you or is that or is that kind of a style you'll find maybe in other cities or you know um so it's interesting uh we were just talking about this before we started but um when i decided that i wanted to kind of shift my styles from when i was working uh you know my college work was pretty like um in the illust- within the illustration world it was pretty generic mm-hmm. um i guess like uh you could go to new york or somewhere like that and you'd find people uh, not only that did that style but probably did it in a more developed and you know finished way mm-hmm. um and so i i was just like uh you know i don't want to be a small fish in a giant pond um, and this was actually part of the reason I moved to Kansas City, or I moved back to Kansas City instead of moving to L.A. or New York, was because I, I could uh, develop a style that made me uh, automatically like a big fish. Um, All right, on. And then to go instead of becoming a big fish in a big pond, um, like a shark or a whale, <laughs> I decided that I wanted to be a big fish in a small pond, or like you know, a growing pond. a growing pond, yeah. right? Um, and that was really part of my, um, we're going to be a lake soon. Yeah, we are. (laughs) Then we'll move into like a great lake. Um, (laughs) but yeah. And so I started, uh, you know, with that in mind and then I eventually, um, I was like, okay, so, well, what is the best way to choose what style to pursue? Um, and it eventually just, you know, I was listening to a podcast actually, um, shout out to the creative pep talk podcast. Um, but there's, it's a guy that does, uh, podcasts like specifically for creatives and designers and um, he talked in one of them about how you should develop like a a style family tree um, that kind of like uh, and you know that so basically you start with yourself at the top um, and then you go into what you're interested in and you find your favorite artists or poets or uh, f- uh, d- film directors or you know any sort of creative and you choose them, and then you look deep into what who, what they were interested in, and then you look into what those people that they were interested in were interested in. And so instead of... Wow. Um, yeah, that would be fun. That would take a long yeah, time. Yeah, and I did that, and, and you know, I chose certain things, like Dr. Who? Dr. Seuss is my favorite. Um, then I really liked, like, the poster designers and the, like... Uh, the movie Yellow Submarine really caught my attention. The um, movie? The movie yep. Yellow Submarine. I don't know what that um, movie is. So it's like, uh, I guess it was like the first. Um, was that a Beatles animated Yeah, thing? it was like the first animated music video, but it was like the whole album. So it was like an hour long. Oh, wow. And my That's favorite, actually interesting. Yeah. I don't, how um, come I don't know that? I don't know. It's pretty popular. I mean, <laughs> I'm, whenever, I'm sure I, whenever it is. I, I can picture, I can picture the picture. I've seen. I've yeah, seen. Like the colorful. The, su- the yeah. submarine, at least. Yeah. With, yeah the and the whole movie is them just going through that submarine, like to different environments, huh. and like a lot of them are all designed. It's really funny that you bring that up. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, uh, and that the designers of those movie, that movie were uh, like Peter Max and Milton Glaser, who were huge in the '60s and '70s as graphic designers, and um, I, they also paint and poster design and stuff. And so I combined them, and I was really interested in like tattoo design. Um, there's a couple like I really like um, Native American culture, and so there's a lot of like you can see some like hidden elements in, in that oh, yeah. regard. Um, and then I like like the South American type, you know, uh, kind of like um, more tribal, Mayan tribal, type yeah, thing? more tribal looking artwork. And okay. so I kind of combined all Aztecs? those together. Yeah, okay. As, yeah, Aztec, Mayan. Then there's like this Samoan type tattoo design that I really like. Oh, cool. Um, and yeah, I combined all of those into just like this one style. Oh, and then doodling, which was like doodling. the heart of it. And I was just like, well, and then I also have like the training, um, to design a world. Cause what I went to school for 
illustration and animation is really world building. And so I was like, what do you mean world building? Um, you know, you're, you're taught to design environments. I mean, all the movies you see, uh, the animated movies, the Disney movies, that's Uh what I went to school for. Um, there's a a world, mm -hmm. your Um, own world. Well, to work for someone as they build their own world. Um, but what I decided was, uh, what is that? The ultimate goal is to be the guy that builds your own world. That's the ultimate goal. Is it? You know, to is be, it to be the Disney or you know my, my I call it my doodle verse. Um, Dope. But uh, I like but it. like but I was in school and I was like, oh, I really like animation, but it would suck to be on a team of a hundred people developing one movie and then your name is all the Lost. way at the bottom as a Nobody, concept artist. Right, yeah. And so I was like, well, I don't like an- I don't like animating, but I really like painting and drawing. Um, I also don't like too much. I don't like like freelance work that much. I do like doing like commission like projects where people come to me for my style, but I don't. Oh, like, that's cool. That's yeah, how that works. Yeah, because okay. uh, whereas a freelancer, you're more of like someone that you're like you're like an art prostitute. Gotcha. You bring your goods to every um, client or company or restaurant who would, uh, that you're interested. Who would be someone like that around here um, that we would might know? If any, I mean, I don't really know. To I mean, I, the closest thing I can think of is like just like just and and I mean, the fields that do that most are graphic design and illustration mm-hmm. um, because it's an alternative to starting your own business. Okay, but it also allows you to be uh, self-employed. Okay, um, but it, it also uh, means that you have to go out and find you know a lot of clients per year, um, sure. and then hopefully they pick you up as like a consistent okay. artist. Okay. Um, but I would, I was like, I don't want people to have their hand in what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So I really would only like to do commission work. And so I was like, well, what's the best way to get people interested is, you know, to bring them into your world. Um, and so really what I've, what I, that's why I started the daily drawing thing on mm-hmm. Instagram. Um, I think I'm on 820 today or yesterday. Wow. Um, but that's yeah, tough. I started it cause I was like, ah, I want this world. I have this world in my head but it's not out there yet and no one's going to know what it looks like until I put it out there. Um, and so I'll do things like environments like that. Um, I'll do creatures, characters, you know, I'll do characters and environments. I'll do all like thousands of different kinds of environments. I'll make some that are totally design based. And so it basically feels like, uh, ultimately if I were to create like a VR world that you could step into, um, you would recognize it because of the right the 2d work. the art of it yeah. sure i don't know how well i can i mean <laughs> right but I, i'm looking yeah. at this picture now and i can I, I can visualize it in 3d exactly easily yeah and i, I, I could the... easily i think a lot of people could easily visualize your art in three dimension right. as as a universe right it's just the doodle first you know what you know what <laughs> does help with that too is parlor yeah because that is so big, it's right. that entire wall, yeah, and it's so bright in there and mm-hmm. wide open. You can kind of feel you almost like, step into, yeah. It in a way. And that was actually the point. How of cool the is that for one. you to do? Yeah, it was cool. The parlor one was interesting because they wanted. <clears throat> when I came in, they were like, "Oh, well, we want like uh, the whole wall, like all the other walls are going to be cut out. There's going to be window, like giant windows in each wall. But this one, for support reasons, had to <laughs> be uh, like maintain like." Uh, solid brick Mm -hmm. um with just that little window and they were like well we'd really like to be for people to be able to see the skyline because that's the one thing you don't get to see because of that wall um and they're like but we really don't want it to be like that generic thing you see like over kansas city like just the skyline yeah um and so i was like well what if i just like literally continued i used the window in the center as like a base point and then i continued what you see out the window um, speci- like directly onto that wall. So like when I was sketching it out, I literally just looked at the, took some pictures out the window and then I, um, you know, just basically continued what I saw through the window standing in the middle of the room mm-hmm. onto the wall. So really you are stepping into out of this world and into mine, um, just through that image. And then I just added, like I said, my design elements, Dude, um, so which cool. bring it into like, I, so I save every photo, um, that P- or I screenshot every photo that I see, uh, people have tagged that wall in. Oh yeah. Um, I think I'm at 400 so far. Um, and so it's nuts. Uh, got me on there. Davis told me, uh, they got the, the 
the uh, I, I guess the owner, like partial owner of Parlor, mm-hmm. he's like, oh, this is going to be one of the most Instagram photo, like, <laughs> you know, one of those walls that Gram has like, the worthy. most Instagram worthy. Yeah, wow. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to like It'll work be, my it, butt off yeah. to get to that point. But it, it did. It does have a decent amount of photos. It's so bright and happy. Yeah. It changes the environment of a space. Um, uh, yeah, but which brings me, how do you get that bright? Is that just paint? Is that I, like it's so bright? Like I'll it doesn't. You, like, it looks like computer it's, graphics. This is another secret weapon of mine. Ooh. Um, I only mix my colors out of the primary colors, and I have a theory behind why. Um, so I would. I used to do my old work, using pre-mixed tube paints and they always had like this what do you mean by that like um forest green instead of like taking yellow and blue and combining them in my own way okay and so like the so my theory is you know the whole world is mixed out of red the primary colors that's why we call them primary colors and then they're secondary so secondary and then anything beyond that is pre-mixed tube colors that somebody in the factory is designing so that you can just squeeze it onto the palette literally just add some white and sure use it um but i was like well the world isn't made up like that and why do you think that flowers are so bright like why do you think that the certain animals have like this um like uh like depth to like there's such a depth in the color to them Mm -hmm. that you don't get out of those premixed two paints and i was like oh well if the world's made out of primary colors my doodle verse has to be made out of primary colors and so i'm really trying to like take elements of this world re basically like if you toss them all into a blender and then um re-spat them out into the world again um, and that's really what my doodle verse is (laughs) (laughs) and so yeah what i do is i literally take I, it's cheap because I only have to buy blue, yellow, and red paint, and then white to add in the color, or to you know soften the color. Um, you make your own. Mm-hmm. Well, every, that's an every art single in color. itself. There. Yeah, it's it's very rare. You're sa- I was gonna yeah. say I can't imagine anybody. I, I've colors. never heard of such a. I mean, I'm not in this world. Yeah. I mean, the old school guys or girls, mm-hmm. um, the like the like the Renaissance artists mm-hmm. and people like that, they would have had to have been technically trained to do that before they could move on to, you know, using tube colors. But now people just half ass the technical training part and then everybody wants yeah. a shortcut. <laughs> so right. it's like, all right, well we get it. We get it. And then they just move on to pre-mixing the tubes. And then you wonder why like art looks so dark, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> that's really amazing. Yeah. And that that's not to like there's other I mean that's that basic that. I mean that's basic art, right? right? I mean that's just basic art one oh one. Right. But I mean, everybody there's skips it to make it they they're pretending to be art three oh one and they just need to stick with yeah. the one oh one in this instance. Yeah. People love the shortcut. The shortcut is the uh But that does seem like one hell of an art to make your own colors. It is. Uh you wow. know it's like uh it's kind of like um, by eye you just judge it by eye mm-hmm. like this is what i want and yeah wow. and oh and Dope. another thing is i never plan a drawing or painting um you know i'll maybe have a theme in mind uh-huh. uh most of the time i'll just start with a line and then i'll just be like oh well oh, it's gonna look like this and then i'll eventually something will come together um but if i do like draw a room i'll literally just draw the room and then i'll just fill it or if i'm gonna draw like you know, I don't plan anything going into it. I don't sketch anything out. I don't sketch the murals out. I just draw it on the wall. Most people use like a projector. I think that that takes away from like the organic. They use a projector for doing a mural or something. Yeah, like uh, if you if you go in there like at night, uh, you can uh, use like one of those grade school projectors, and you can project the the sketch onto the wall, and then you can trace it. So they're tracing their own work, in a way. and that's not a bad thing. I mean, a lot of people do it, but is that frowned that, like, upon? Uh, no, I, for for me, I just think it adds like way like you get the same feeling of the the original drawing when you just like do another original drawing on the wall. I kind of frown on it. I, I, well, hear, I, I hear I hear that I mean, and I get disappointed. I don't like I as an artist, it's hard to like you can't like you don't want to like be too confident in yourself, but like a lot of people do it. Um, and so it's a lot of people just because a lot of people do it and there's a lot at stake or something they don't want to lose out on it a lot of people are really nervous to to put something to paper that has not been planned out 
um, especially when it when it uh, is going to be seen by so many people in the public. Um, if it's good, but I right. that's how I thrive. Like I love live drawing. Like I love doing. Like at first Fridays, I always am drawing something while I'm working or while I'm selling my stuff. It's like a hook. Yeah, I can hook people in. So if like I don't know, I think that there's something interesting about just drawing on the wall and then it becomes not the sketch anymore it's a brand new drawing if that makes sense that is, that, yeah. I'd, I'd love to get a uh, sleeve tattoo by someone like this, <laughs> just as a freehand this like, guy you know, designed we, this freehand he just f- freehand tattooed it on my arm yeah I'd like yeah. to do something like that so I think it takes that, that artist be, trust <laughs> yeah I think that'd be dope yeah yeah no I mean I, I just think it's I just think it's a it's an interesting and that just adds to kind of like you know, when a tree, like when, when certain things happen in nature, it's where I gain most of my inspiration really is just from the way that nature functions. And I kind of try to use that as like a meter for how to function, how my world should function. Um, and I notice that most things are just organized chaos. Um, you know, things will just evolve, uh, you know, as it happened, it's not like some, the plant that grew was pre-sketched out and then it just right. <laughs> it grew to be that sketch. It was just you know, just developed Develop, and, yeah. and, and that's what makes it so really beautiful. I guess there's a term I like a lot. Um, and, Oh, this is going to be bad. I don't know which culture uh, it's, it's some, some sort of Asian culture. Um, but it's called Wabi Sabi and it's like, I've heard uh, of that. It's like a term that, that like they use, uh, and it was developed, um, because, uh, at a certain point there, like pottery was getting so perfect that it was looking like machine done. And so the term, so they, the, that term kind of evolved into being like uh, describing uh, beauty in the imperfection of something. So like that pot wasn't beautiful until it had a crack that was then mended and then it became beautiful. Huh. Um, and so that's kind of what I like. It's like, oh, if I make a mistake, I fix it. I don't ever draw over it. I don't erase anything. I just uh, use that as a new starting point. Interesting. Yeah. Dude, it's a crazy brain. <laughs> a lot of good. I, I don't is, talk a lot. Is your brain it. constantly mm-hmm. working? Oh, yeah. Like constantly thinking? It's like, uh, it's like a visual scanner. Yeah. Um, Do you see the website. world in doodle verse? I don't. No. Okay. No. Well, that's I, probably I good. Do, I do. Like I just, this kind of want? evolved out of uh, illustration school is I do um, see faces and things like uh, not in a creepy way. Um, but like if I'm looking at like, um, you know, just like a, like a toilet bowl or mm-hmm. something and I'm just like, huh, it's a funny looking face <laughs> and, oh, I'm and sure. no, no seems, one would see, yeah, you know, I would see that, yeah. but like it takes that mind to take that picture. Then, then they can post it in a meme and everyone would be like, Oh, I get it. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm always kind of looking, looking for stuff like that, but I, I, I always crack up when people are like, I can't imagine what that guy's mind is like. It's like, oh, it's just like yours until he puts what is in his mind onto paper. Mm-hmm. Just kind of like a writer. Like, it's just like anyone else's Any until they put type. that on the paper. And then it becomes something. Um, I, I don't know. For me, it almost is weird. It's almost like magic in a way. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm not like, I'm just like, it's just like randomly coming out of my, How my cool brain is that? I bet you know it what is i mean like it would be like ma- it's if, like if i have I a magic do, wand <laughs> if i could do something like that i would freak myself out yeah, every single I time i crack up i, I like, would be like, like <laughs> how am i how am i doing how am i drawing this, this is so Dude. good how am i doing this <laughs> <laughs> and, and and like i'll sit there and like i said i don't talk like I, I'm, I spend a lot of time in the studio i don't talk to a lot of people um i try and uh, you know i try and keep those thoughts going because uh, i love them like it keeps me moving forward um and i'll like literally start laughing out loud when i'm like holy shit (laughs) like i can't like especially when i finish a painting Mm -hmm. um you know there's that aesthetic to the drawing but then once it's like colored i'm like damn like if i were like a you know if i were an art critic i'd be like impressed (laughs) yeah (laughs) and not to sound like like cocky in a way but like it just like i get caught off i I get caught off guard yeah it's like that same situation if you're writing and you're like, huh, it's a really good, like, way to phrase that, you know? Yeah. It's just visual. That's so cool. <clears throat> when did you realize you were, like, super artistic like that? Like, that you could do 
do mm-hmm. art. You know what I mean? Like you could draw and it looked awesome. So I went to, I would always draw when I was younger. Um, and my parents were really supportive of that, which mm-hmm. is really uh, like probably the most important thing, I think. Um, in terms it is, of man. Like, it's important to have good parents, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think it, I just think it's, it's important if, if they're going to be involved for them to be supportive of what you're, um, or, you know, to, to hone in on what you're interested in early on and to support that. Um, even if they don't, if even it's not going to end up being a career or whatever, but it's important because, um, it fosters that interest instead of like the reason most, you know, everyone's an artist until the school system tells them that they're not. And then they stop. You know, everyone drew when they were younger. It's the interest level that that uh, really carries someone forward. And um, it's true. with my parents supporting that interest level, um, it really uh, it really propelled me. It's almost like, you know, your dad or your mom saying, like, nice hit in a baseball game. Right. And you're like, damn, I did get a nice right, hit. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I, but, I, but then that, like, it makes you want to do more. And so I was, like, uh, I was always drawing at a young age. And then they, uh, they, along with my high school art teacher, um, came up to me, like, as I started, I was like, I took probably in like nine, high, nine art classes in high school. Like, I don't even think it's like legal to do that. <laughs> um, but they, the teachers like supported it. Wow. Um, and they would let me draw in class, like, uh, cause they knew I was like listening more. So I would doodle in class all, like all of high school. Um, and that's rare. Yeah. Holy cow. You yeah. got lucky to get, yeah. <laughs> How did well, they picked teachers? up on it. Cause I, cause I was, I was <clears throat> so like involved in that art, like class, um, that they could see that I was probably going to go somewhere with it. And mm-hmm. then they could, they were like, okay, so, you know, if we want this kid to even care about what we're talking about in this English class or in this math class, like he's got to be able to, um, you know, pursue it in a way that's going to support his interests and so they allowed me to kind of pursue it um well well like just drawing and it really it does i listen a lot better while i'm drawing wow um, that so is then, so cool <laughs> that's so cool yeah man. it's it, and where did you go like, to school rockhurst okay yeah and um which is a weird school to go to for is it? being an artist um i mean it not it's not in a bad way it's just mm-hmm. it's more academic uh, it's a college prep school right and yeah, that art teacher was like, Hey man. And my, and my teachers were, or my parents were supportive of it. He was like, Hey man, you know, you don't have to be, and I eventually evolved back into being like more of a fine artist illustrator, but he was like, you don't, you can make a living, um, just doing art. And at that point I was doing like photorealistic drawings mm-hmm. of people and, you know, small commission portraits for people and stuff. Yeah. Um, and he was like, Le, he, he helped me apply to, uh, KU's graphic design program. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm doing graphic design. I slowly evolved into uh, not wanting to simplify everything down into its like most refined state, and instead I chose illustration, which is more same same like design school, um, but illustration was focused more on like expanding a concept. So you know, I went to the the extent of creating an entire world out right. of what I what I did, but like. Uh, yeah, it focused mostly on ex- taking one concept and telling a story ab- out of it rather than, like, refining it into the simplest one visual image you can get. And that's more like graphic design. So I just chose that, and then that eventually led me into, um, rather than, like, being trying to get client work or doing, uh, like, working for a firm mm-hmm. and doing someone else's style or doing a style that they wanted me to do, mm-hmm. I was just like, well... I mean, if I can build a big enough world and if I can make it, um, you know, not inclusive in like the political sense, but like if I can make it uh, inclusive enough to where it draws not just like art collectors, but also like the general public. I mean, like you're interested in it and people, right, yeah. like, people like, yeah. are interested in it. If I can draw those people in, yeah, um, then I can really be like, like a fine art painter. Um, that has like a skill set that not many fine art painters have, which is that illustration background, the world building. Um, and so you can like, eventually I want to get into doing like massive, I've already done really large scale canvas work, but I want to get into, you know, filling 20, 30 foot wall canvas, um, where you have to spend like 10, 15, 20 minutes looking through it, um, to get like 
everything out of it if that makes sense it does but that's like my my goal is just like actually well you got you know? <laughs> so much stuff going on i mean you can you look at the at your pictures and you can tell the you can tell overall what it is right but then it's like an easter egg hunt exactly you're like just looking for like oh hey check that little thing or oh look there's something hidden here like do you ever have anything in mind like i want to hide oh, something yeah. yeah i i don't talk about this um and i also don't think i will like talk about it too deeply but i use um you know every artist does it in a way poetry like um film like uh you know all the movies you see you're like oh i see what they're trying to tell me you're, mm-hmm. they're trying to force me to think this way right but i want to do it in a way i used my world my doodle verse as a way to um reinterpret what i see going on in the world um and not in a I hate politics, like, uh, you know, not the, I don't, I don't dislike politics, but I hate like the, di- the, uh, polarization that it causes. Yeah, yeah. And so what I try and do is just basically make my scope of the world we live in, uh, you know, spin it positively. So I hide a bunch of stuff in my work, but it's all, it's nothing's like, nothing's like sadistic or like, uh, subliminal. It's all just like positive. If that makes sense. Um, I mean, if anybody looks at your art, that makes total sense. Right. I mean, I was going to say or ask, I mean, are you, are you like the happiest guy ever? Like, because I mean, because it just seems like all of your shit's happy. Like right. you just get happy. It, it's, it it, 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 it's, it's just happy stuff. Mm-hmm. And I imagine that, I mean, the art must reflect the artist. Right. A lot of the time. So it just to me, it just seemed you must be a pretty happy dude. Yeah. Um, so right around the time that I was design or that I was rebranding my style and my approach, uh, I started listening to like a lot of personal development, like motivational, like business, like, you know, you name it, like, like Joe Rogan, like all these, like just, uh, people from all different like fields of study. And like, now I'm listening to like psychologists and like philosopher. And I'm like, it's just like you get, you get bored of one thing and move on to the next, but it it started by me listening to like motivational content and, um, like books, like listening to books. So I listen to podcasts, YouTube, uh, YouTube videos, compliment compilations, different speakers, different like famous people, not so famous people. Tony Um, Robbins. Yeah. But like some of those, yeah, I like, I like Gary V a lot for business, business stuff, but it's, it started with motivational, you know, like the baseline, like Tony Robbins type stuff. And then I eventually was like, all right, like, you know, it's the same thing over and over with all of the guys. They're just like, you know, listen to what I say and go do something about it. Stop listening to what I say. Because if you just do that the whole time, you're just like, festering and like doing nothing but being positive <laughs> and and i was like okay so then i slowly evolved into like listening to people that have that same approach that do more of a that are more business mindseted um and you know that they kind of spread the gamut in terms of what they talk about and, and their businesses and whatnot mm-hmm. um, but i started thinking like oh i can like learn from the greats instead of just being like oh i can pump myself up and um and and that that like when I was listening to the motivational stuff, it really like as I was changing my style, I was changing like the way I treated people. Like I was, I really changed every the the way that I do everything, mm-hmm. and I it seemed fitting to kind of rebrand like my you know approach to living. And so I was more, I I basically rebranded myself, brainwashed myself into being like. Yeah, like the most positive person. <laughs> and now I'm just like, I don't feel bad. Like the only times I feel uh-huh. bad is when I have like a lot of stuff I'm thinking about business wise. I never feel like emotional. Like, you know, yeah. everyone has emotions, but I never feel like, uh, I never like get that, let that stuff get to me because I've learned, I've spent thousands and thousands of hours listening to the people that have let it get to them the most and just learning from them. Um, and, you know, shortcutting myself you know Mm -hmm. in a way um past you know having to make make those mistakes to learn them you know i'm just learning from their mistakes so i mean honestly yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's a roundabout way i'm really positive but i still like listen to that stuff it it gets me like hyped and what are you listening to right now these days it's kind of keeps you motivated jordan peterson oh really um i like him yeah i've been listening to seth godin yeah i don't know him Uh, he's more of a marketer 
Jordan Peterson is so he's controversial. Just, yeah, dude, I, I don't I, understand why. I, I, people want to bite people's heads off for no reason, and it, they have a false reason. Like, I, I yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a, uh, and I, I I don't want to get too political, but I think it's like an ignorance to the way that things are going on around them, mm-hmm. and he's more like black and white. Right. Um, same with Gary V. Like they're both just like super black and white in their own way, and. Um, when you are black and white, I consider myself pretty black and white. And when you are black and white, um, you really learn how to turn the critics away and knowing that you're going to be turning the critics away. You're basically getting like 50% like hate and then you're getting like 50% love, but you only focus on the love, the people that really enjoy it. Sure. And so we see all these people that hate Jordan Peterson but he only sees all the people that love Jordan Peterson. Yeah. You know, he's, he doesn't care. He's about focused. It's like, the... it's like the same thing with like Trump. Um, like when he was elected, you know, he was using his, uh, his campaign tactics as like a marketing approach. Um, yeah, he's a and marketing genius. Yeah, and I'm when you're, like... and when you're in a mark, when you're a marketer, you know that 50% of your audience is not going to agree. And 50% are, and you just focus on the 50% that are, and then you let the other people do their thing. <laughs> and dude, he like it. And it then he proved, fucks with them. I think yeah. he, then he likes to fuck <laughs> with nuts. them. He's like, yo, you hate it me? Pr- Watch this. <laughs> it proved how effective marketing is. It's effective enough to reach the White House, our government. And so it's amazing. It's like, yeah. I, people don't look at it like that. I've, no. People say he's a horrible businessman. Yeah. He's failed at this and that. I go, I, don't know I, go I think about. he's <laughs> the most brilliant businessman yeah. ever because. What is his business? His business is Trump. Right. Trump is his business. He businessed himself. Nothing else. His, it's his name, <laughs> Trump himself. He is exactly. the business. He got himself to be king of the world. Yeah, he businessed himself for up into the probably eight <laughs> years. I don't, I yeah. don't see him losing. Yeah, it's 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 a really. I, I just think it's really interesting because people like they can they can say whatever they want, you mm-hmm. know. And I like I'm sure there's a lot of people that dislike my positive spin on things. Maybe they don't dislike the art. Um, but they dislike my positive spin on things. You think so? so? I mean, I don't. I mean, a lot of do people. Do you hear think, that kind of? Do you hear that? I've never heard anything negative, but I can. I know that there's there's got to be like there's there's a group of people that hate positive thinking because they think it's not authentic. If that makes sense. Um, Who are those people? You know, just all the same ne- same negative people that have that same you know approach towards you know that same mindset. Um, I think we're just talking about like people politics. that are probably like mentally depressed or yeah. Something. I mean, in a way, but like it, th- you can work your way <clears throat> out of that. Like, I don't know. I don't want to get too heavy into that. I mean, I I had like a in in high school, I had like a more kind of like a you know I thought I was like depressed and had anxiety and stuff, and I really just realized that I was not like um, I was not doing what I want. Um, I was, That's huge. I was like, That's huge. I was like sedating myself from being like, a, um, you know, the best that I can be. And, you know, I was just like, uh, it's uh, like, if you can go from that state to where I am at, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> it's, it's like, I, like, I sh- almost just like, I feel like I know what to tell those people. To um, do what you love. They, yeah. I mean, I know what to tell them. They All just, right. uh, there's a certain group that won't listen. Um, and it's just built into their nature and that's their, that's their nature. It's hard as a lot of people don't do it. I mean, you are, as I said at the very beginning, you are an exceptional human being. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Because you, you're right. You, you can tell people like that they have passions, um, but they don't pursue them. Right. They just, uh, that was a good quote. I'm trying to think of who it is. Most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Right. I think it's Thoreau. I don't yeah. Know. Um, and you see that everywhere. You can just, you're, you're super depressed and shit. Yeah. And obviously this isn't going to fix it completely right away, but it right. ma- makes, I mean, that's, that's how my it, podcast yeah, started. It makes it better. That's my, this podcast is purely to get me out of my depression. Right. That I, that I was in when I first started this. And right. this is motivation to keep me going. Yeah. And to, it gives me, it's my passion. It gives me something to look right. forward to and to live for. And uh, yeah, I mean, and so we all we all have like emotions, um, and like that's it's like kind of a deep topic to talk about. But like, I think that like uh, I am more under the uh, the um, you know I think that 
like depression and anxiety, everyone has them, their emotions. Um, but they're spiked by situational uh, occurrences in our lives. And so like when those are spiked, you know, when we have a situation that spikes our anxiety or our negativity, mm-hmm. um, what a lot of people do instead of trying to like fight against that is they, uh, they crumble, they take the easy way out and they, uh, they use the scapegoat of saying, um, oh, it's my depression. Like, yeah. oh, it's my anxiety. Like, I have anxiety. I have depression. I think like, there I is get, yeah. a lot of some of that, but I, I mean, there is, there yeah. is. And then there is, like, yeah. actual clinical yeah. depression so that's like diagnosed. And, and that's where everyone's brain is so different. Right. That's, I, that's why I believe that, like, those people that, like, don't want to agree, like, regardless of if something is true, like what we were talking about with, like, the marketing or, like, the, you know, the, the politics, um, if you don't want to agree, um, you're just not going to agree and your brain, your right. mind, your mind chemistry is like that. And, uh, if that's going to be true, then that also <laughs> means that some people's, uh, genetic makeup is going to be more prone to those things, to like sure. anxiety and depression, which we oh, yeah. consider is what, that's what we consider to the clinical part. You right. Know? Um, but really it's just, you know, it's their makeup. And so what we all have to do is kind of like function with our makeup, you know, and like my makeup is like hyper visual, you know, mm-hmm. and, and like some people's are like hyper uh, verbal and like, they're really good at writing. Um, but I see that most in my community, I feel like it's very prominent in like the art community, um, to see the, the depression and anxiety stuff. Oh, um, sure. And sure, that is that is pretty prevalent yeah, amongst artists, because right? they're 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 very like uh, their chemical makeup and art. My chemical <clears throat> makeup, it's just like it's very emotional, right? Um, and so we're very passionate about uh, what we do, and um, usually pretty sensitive. Yeah, and a lot of times when you're like, uh, if you don't get accepted in that f- in your field, um, like your your emotions are gonna spike. Um, it's going to like cause, and then you're going to be like, Oh, well, I can't, I, can't, I won't get accepted. And now I have this like negative. Like, what do you negative, mean accepted? Like what, what, what like if you're negative? like, if you're a, like an artist that doesn't have their work accepted, you know, if they, if you're not like, if no, one, mean, like, no like, one likes it, you know, or if, if like, you're just kind of like the guy that's like, Oh, they don't get it. Like, uh, it's like, I, like I get, I get what I'm doing, but like, you know, there's just some people that are like hobby artists, in a mm-hmm. way, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, accepted meaning like industry accepted. Uh, like if you were a graphic designer and you had this style and nobody would hire you for it. Um, okay. You know, that can really put a damper on your, well, that does your kinda, freelance that, business. Well, doesn't that just mean your art sucks and yeah. nobody likes your style and, and it sucks? You might like it, but look, it's man, interesting. it's not being sold. The people don't like your shit. Yeah. I'm sorry. It might be, you might have crispy lines right. and you've got theory down and your colors are good, but if it's just done, if it's just not good. Right. So, and you, yeah, you know, I think, I mean, I think that that's, it's I just think, not good. People don't like your style. Yeah, I think it's true. And I think that, so we have to fit within the confines. Learn of, to code. Yeah. We have to, <laughs> we have to fit within the confines of where like culture is at in terms of our style. And so if you're doing something too old or too new, no one's going to accept it. Um, except for like the really, um, nostalgic people that want the old stuff. Is there some kind um, of like other like, <laughs> yeah, there's some like old, Monet some like or old Manet school, type. But like some of those people. <clears throat> they were so ahead of their time that they didn't get recognized during their time. Right. And so that's the funny part is that like, yeah, their work could be bad or it could just be like too far ahead of where we're at. So in that, way. that's interesting. But, yeah. but either way, but like, but either way it's not selling, man, no, and you got to figure yeah. something else out or switch stuck, your style. If you're stuck in that situation right. where you're like, damn, I know it's good, but no one's liking it on Instagram or no one's doing, you know, um, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. The social media. I bet. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but if you're, if you're not getting attention because of it, um, I mean, wh- like, are you going to feel happy? <laughs> like, what are you doing it yeah. for? Um, I think that, I think that the whole point is to be doing it for yourself. Um, right. I mean, are you doing it for the yeah. attention? If you're doing it for the attention and you're not getting, getting the attention you feel you deserve, right. you're not going to be happy exactly. and you're not, and you're doing it for the wrong reasons. I yeah. think. Yeah, I think that I think that that is the easiest indicator of when someone, um, you know, isn't good. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't want to be like the judge and jury of who's good at art and who's not because who's the same? It's so, it's so subjective. subjective. <laughs> right. Um, but like, I will say that the people that chase, I have, there's another really cool, cool uh, thought. Um, uh, the people that chase like being a replica of their favorite artist, um, or, you know, um, people that they admire, there's, uh, uh, there's two negative elements to it. First, you chase that, you chase that style. You're always going to be the, even if you get good at that style, you're always going to be the second best at that style. Not only that, but you're going to be the second best at your favorite artist's style which means that you put yourself in a position to become the competitor to your favorite artist. And so the person that you were looking up to at one point is now hating you. What would be an example to that? Because I don't know any artists or like, people like like i see it more in graphic design okay um other so there's like well-established graphic design artists where like mm -hmm. you just see this person's stuff all over the place and you know that's a blank right whatever that person's name that's a smith right and then the and then the students um will be like well i really love it i i developed like my own like um who would be who would be somebody that's like who's who are a couple of the top people who people might compare themselves to and be like that guy's awesome i want to like, or what? What would um, they have done that maybe people would see? Or see, notice? I've gotten so niche into my own style. Like someone in my style that, <clears throat> that people get pinned for is like uh, someone like Keith Haring. Um, Keith Haring was like a illustrator, um, you know, an artist um, back like oh, I don't remember when, like sixties ish, seventies ish. I don't. I'm not. I'm not don't sure. quote me on that. Maybe the eighties. Um, he had to have lived at some point. <laughs> uh, but he used to do like um, he used to just like fill walls with like s- like not illustration based stuff as much as it was more like that space filler stuff and he would have like like tattoo like, type stuff yeah but it was like um, I, I, can I mean I'm not saying you. that it was but like, like that it, idea that it was concept, like uh, right? he would like fill space with like human like stick figures almost in a way okay um, but like now everyone that tries to do that um, everyone will just be like Keith Haring, like you're, you're like, and and then you just get point, you get pinned not only by I, that yeah, artist yeah, since it. he's dead, but you get pinned not only by that artist, but you can get pinned by culture, because social media is so prevalent that you, the culture will call you out on it. Um, he did, that's him. So he has a similar similar like vibe. But yeah, I was yeah. like, but I was like, in this, I have to like very much separate myself from those people. Okay. Otherwise, like, they're what do you mean like separate? Just just them. not listen just to them. Just... Con- no, no. Content wise, like I had to literally separate myself from the way that Keith Haring did his work. Okay. And the way that like, the way that Doctor Seuss did his work. Because if I was, if, right. if I okay, so that's where the that's where the family tree right. of oh, design yeah. comes in handy, because. What you can do is you can look at all of those artists, like if you were a fan of Keith Haring or if you're a fan of Dr. Seuss, if you only were a fan of Dr. Seuss and you were trying in school, you wanted to become the next Dr. Seuss, but all you looked at was Dr. Seuss's work, then that means that your only source of inspiration is that one person's right. work, which means that you're going to become the knockoff of mm-hmm. that person. Right. Um, but if you have like inspiration from you know, Dr. Seuss from Milton Glaser from like, this is my, my, from tattoo art, from, you know, mural work, from graffiti, from like all these different elements. You, uh, don't have a style that anyone has. You have your style, um, which is, you know, everyone has interests. So mm-hmm. in, in a sense, we all have a style. It's like a martial art, You're like yeah. a mixed martial artist. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, everyone has their own clothing style, the way that they dress. They a mixed style. artist, artist. Yeah. And, yeah, and I I love martial like I, funny you mentioned that like I love like martial arts because it has like that same mindset you know, um, and I, that's actually something I draw inspiration from and I I try and practice it as much as possible so I can, you know, have all these random elements come together, but if I was you know if I was just the fan of Dr. Seuss mm-hmm. again like I would just be his knockoff. Um, and so that family tree, that's is that like easy to fall tree. into? Do a lot of people fall into that trap? Um, not with him. I mean, not him, but yeah. I'm, I'm saying that. Yeah. Trap of I mean, it's the, it's the ultimate trap really? for okay. students. Um, and Makes sense, they try and break it out of you in school. It's hard. Um, yeah. well, I mean like, uh, like if you think about like, um, 
if you know the the only the only way that you know something is done you know and this is why I feel, I feel like science and some of these things get so like um convoluted and like competitive and because the, like they just <clears throat> like they fester in the same space and they and it, and it just like there's only one like you know principle like or one like set of principles and so like when you bring someone um and this, this sounds weird but like when i listen to a philosopher or a scientist i'm like holy shit they're not thinking of this like they forgot this part yeah they forgot this because i see visually they don't but i'm also seeing what they see they still aren't trying to see what i see and so when they're kind of festering in that pool um, it becomes competitive and it becomes convoluted. Yeah. But like when you get someone like Albert Einstein who goes into that pool and it's like, I think that you guys might be wrong, <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden, like that's the first mover. And so it's all, it takes like that person that thinks differently in a field mm-hmm. or it takes a principle from one field and then brings it into another field to actually recreate that field. So Steve jobs, right? Like he, he came in and he was like, he gets fired first for, you know, festering in the pool. (laughs) And then he comes back and he's like, I think we've got it all wrong. Mm -hmm. And he goes, we need to start doing this. And all of a sudden he becomes the only face right for, for, you know, that niche. Um, it's interesting. Um, but it takes stepping outside of your, you know, I, that's uh, the the tree the family tree thing a applies for every it, yeah. it applies for everything like if you could really break down your own psychology if you developed your interest family tree you know just any anyone that's funny i've done i i'm thinking in my head um i have a podcast family tree in my head right it's not just rogan it's a whole bunch of but i can be like him and then his little offshoots were over here right it's, yeah I should write that down sometime. Right. And it, it, it's interesting because it's, it, 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 it pushes you to, um, you know, you're never stuck on thinking about being one of them too mm-hmm. much. And so right. it pushes you to be yourself because none of them are a combination of those exactly yeah. favorite podcasts. Right. You are the combination of those favorite podcasts. Huh. And so you're like a, a channel. Yeah, uh, for all of their theories to come together and then become one. Yep, and that's what I, that's where like it's funny. It doesn't. It's not just art. Um, I just think it's something that we don't spend enough time thinking about. If that makes sense. I don't know who thinks like <laughs> who thinks like that outside of even just like creative people. You yeah, know? people have got too much other shit going on. You know, so, people are thinking. Yeah, just, I mean, I think that's where that's where I think the uh, going back to the whole depression and. Mm-hmm. Um, Anxiety thing, um, I think that a lot of people, and again, there's totally like the clinical side of things, Mm -hmm. but I think just like there's ADD, you know, but I think that a lot of people are doing things they fucking hate. Most and, everybody, and, right? And the thing I do is, what I, like, I hate what I do yeah. every day. And and what, this what, is my outlet. What you should, you know, if if you're in that situation, um the best thing you can do is take your passion and combine it with your skill set mm-hmm. and whatever you, you know, um, there's, there's different ways to, you know, to appropriate that because everyone's got a different, you know, uh, circumstantial situation, the way right. that they grew up, you know, so, uh, there's so many factors. Um, but like if you take someone that does accounting and they, uh, I get this all the time. Like, dude, I wish I could just spend the m- as much. Like, I wish I could just do that for a living. And I was like, and, yeah, you know, I'll hear this from, like, accounting people and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I'll be like, okay, you like accounting, right? Like, I mean, you know, maybe you don't like it, but it's your skill set. Like, you're a organizer. There's creators and there's organizers. Um, and you're a, an organizer. You're really good at, you know, organizing the, mm-hmm. fun- the elements of the world. Um, but you hate organizing well what's your passion oh i love golf become an accountant for a golf company oh yeah and then you're combining your passion for maybe it's not like immediately possible Mm -hmm. but work towards that and working the actual process of working towards that will make your job more enjoyable like doing the podcast it's like you're making your passion something that is uh lightening the load 
right for what your daily what you've got to do daily like that, that right. stuff's not like like it's fun but like the most fun is just like painting like for my own you know st- my own myself right but like the fact that I have my passion combined with doing commission work and project like uh, mural work and like dude mu- like mural work is like it's like a ho- being a house painter it's not like you're out in the sun like it's not like great but like you have the the ability to spread your passion through that channel mm-hmm. like the house painter's role or like through doing like li- I don't know it's interesting I just think it's I think it it's more universal than we think um, if that makes sense it does totally <laughs> in a That's roundabout beautiful. roundabout yeah. way <laughs> That's what I love about artists I just love the way they think and see the world and so we I think that some of the some of the best scientists had like a creative mind. I think that that's that's really what brought like not an artistic mind but they had like this like Carl Sagan you know, was a stoner yeah I mean it, like I honestly think Albert Einstein went did acid or something I'm not sure <laughs> but um had to have with that crazy hair th- was that so was many, it like, I don't think it was invented yet. I'm just I'm just joking but uh it wasn't invented but yet. there are so yeah. many like uh psychedelic uh Instagram accounts that like try and design all of those art those like big uh, scientists like looking all trippy it's really funny um but i mean like some of those guys like newton and people like that he's just like everyone else is over in the science field like you know festering doing their thing you know working with what they've got until they discover something else and then they'll work with that they'll work that into it and he's in here like that apple didn't just fall from the tree for no reason. Like, and he's sitting there like thinking about it and he's probably just like, you know, what are the like principles behind that? And he's like, well, we haven't developed any principles behind that yet. And all of a sudden, like, uh, that creative mindset spurred the current state of science, you know, but it, it came from a, you know, I don't even know if that story is true, but right. it's it's, right. it's, it's so symbolic. Knows, it's symbolic yeah. for a guy having sat in the in in nature and and really gathered um, what we know as at, like today as like the standard um, by just being like in nature. Like I love sitting in nature because yeah, it gives me that. a ton like a, a ton of ideas. The um, that's really what I hide in there is like stuff that no one else is looking at. You say you enjoy nature and stuff. What does that mean to you? Like, what are you doing? I mean, to I will enjoy nature. Like, I will go out and sit just by a river and just look at the way that everything's functioning for two, three hours, and I'll just look at it like the way it's functioning. I, I was in Lawrence uh, last year, or yeah, I moved down here a year ago from Lawrence. I lived by a wild re- wildlife reserve, like right out in the country, nice. and um, I would go out there every single day, and I would bring my sketchbook if I needed to sketch. I'd, uh, otherwise I would just sit and I'd bring like something to write so I could write down ideas. I wouldn't bring any technology. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't bring anything that would be a distraction. And I would just sit there by the river and it's the same spot every time. And it became like, um, uh, it, f- it feels almost like that scientist's moment where you're just like, Oh, I know. I like, I have all this like a uh, visual info now that like not many people have. Um, and I actually started like a word document and I got up to having like, I mean, I, before I had to split it up into like, I had to split it, split it from being like just a comprehensive word document into being like my products, my marketing, and then my like concepts document, my life kind of document. Um, but I had like 200 pages in that word document of just like things that I was gathering. And so like, I've never even shared, I wouldn't share it with anybody, but I have like, all these like insights that I know aren't, you know, out there yet. Um, you know, maybe they are in a certain way, but, um, but they're like my scope because they only function through my brain Okay, in that wow. way. You know, uh, if someone else was sitting out by that same river, it would be a totally different concept right? because their chemistry, their brain chemistry is totally different. Huh. And so, like that's that's where I really like that's where I really like I will sit there and I will actually get unsolicited direction on where I need to 
move next or what I need to do next in terms of business. You know, I wouldn't be go out there with like an expectation. You're clear headed. Yeah. Yeah. I would. It's I like, would be just it's, be like, it's like meditating. Out yeah, there, it is. Yeah. It is. And I would just be like, why? Like, and I, there, it got to a point where I started just like driving or like, I would just go on drives and I'd be like, all right, this is the time to figure whatever I need to figure out out. And I would just sit there, be totally silent, let things work themselves out. And I just like, if I saw some, like, I, I have like this weird, I don't know, this is, it, get, it gets kind of deep, but I have like this weird kind of connection with nature. And like, if I see a certain thing, I, for some reason I have this thing with hawks. Um, hawks are and, if I see, and if I see a hawk, I follow it. And every single time I'd follow and there were just like, there was like families of them that would live in this wildlife reserve. And every single time I would follow the hawk, um, I would end up somewhere. Uh, whether that be like a physical place or like a mindset or like a, a uh, you know, an answer to something that I've been like pondering for a mm -hmm. long time. And I'd be like, oh, like this is what they mean, spirit animal in a way, oh, cool. I guess in a way. I'd right be like, not, not in like a weird, like, you know in a weird way like that but i'm like you know like this is what i connect with and this really directs me mm -hmm. in a certain way and there's certain things like that like there's this one motivational speaker that i listen to um and he writes his own music behind it um like uh he like records it and then and he's a musician but he's he combined his two talents right uh speaking and 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 um writing music and every single time I listen to his one of his things, they just answer the question for me. And it's just totally irrelevant to the situation I'm in. But it just answers the question for me. And there's like a couple avenues or, you know, a couple things that do that for me. But I think that, you know, it pays a lot to be paying more attention to the way that the natural world um, can influence hmm. our um, our human world or, you know, what we've developed, mm -hmm. um, because you can get caught up in the city all day and never see a thing. Yeah. And then you lose completely focus. different. I, I think a lot of people, <clears throat> I mean, there's so many people that haven't left the city, right? Like and they, they, have, what, they, yeah. they don't know what, I mean, they've gone to yeah. the zoo, but and that's you're not, a hunter, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, you know, you know, <clears throat> the outdoors well. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, that's what, yeah. Hunting. I was going to ask you if you've ever done anything like that. I, mean, I have. Yeah. Um, but I'd, I almost just prefer not, like, I don't know. I, I, I'm nothing against it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's probably the most natural thing that we do <laughs> right? as humans, though people right. would hate on it. I I think it's like, These people are ignorant. <laughs> it's like oh, the most typically, natural thing we do. Typically ignorant um, people. Yeah. But I would, but I'd like, I think it's, we're pulling on the same strings. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're tapping into that, that primal DNA. Um, so DNA I, I, I look and I'm it. sitting out there tapping into the primal DNA. Yeah. Just of, being out you know, there. The just, more, yeah. the, you know, and not that hunting is not peaceful and sitting out there is peaceful, but I'm kind of channeling like that more. I, like I said, I'm huge on native American culture. Um, I don't want to offend anyone. I have like native American, like, uh, uh, heritage like I have a like my grandpa's grandpa uh, was like full blood oh, cool. um, but like I'm sitting out there and I feel like I'm really channeling like that peaceful side of like that culture and then there's like the warring side and then there's like the hunting side mm -hmm. and they kind of have to like inner you know inner mm -hmm. you know, connect uh, for them to function and that was like part of their theory you know it's, it's great to for I mean people in general um like i've said this before but i think men in general not necessarily the hunt i mean i think it's i think if you eat meat you should at least try hunting one time to see what right. it's all about um however just getting out in nature like that i mean at least for me like i like i'll get in a tree and hang out in a tree for yeah. hours and just before the sun comes up and just you're in nature and you're just you belong it, but you're yeah. but you're blended in you're trying not to let anything see you so you're getting let in like exactly. nature's giving you like this little secret of what really goes on exactly like all the little squirrels interacting and it's, fighting with each other you, you like uh you start to like i started to realize this is part of like some of the stuff i would like gather i'd be like i think that they're smarter than we think they are like you know not oh, maybe, i don't think they're that smart maybe no 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 maybe <laughs> not smart yeah mentally like 
but they sure as hell know how to function and live better than we do. We have created a world that we now function and live in separate from that world. But they, and then we have all these issues. But they don't have any issues. They got issues all the time. They, yeah, all the time amongst all, themselves. All, no, no, no. You don't want to be an animal. They're running for their lives. That's, that's all they're but doing. They, but they, but they get it. <laughs> We're running for our lives too. But they are no. They're literally, literally, right, running for their lives. Like, right. Uh, you, there's coyotes. There's hawks. Yeah. There's snakes. There's, there's but just they not, get it. Every little move, they're like, Phew. they get it. We just go, oh, like I'm scared. There's gonna be a bear. Like if, if if I'm scared there's gonna be a bear, I'll just bring a gun and kill it. So it's the same thing. But, but we you're have not, like an like, easy yeah. way. Like they get it. They know how to run. They know when to run. They know where to run. They just well, yeah, they, they know the to. land. We don't know the land. Yeah. We we're they know we're, the land that they live on. They don't know anything <laughs> outside of that. It takes them a while. We're in a s we're in a similar landscape though. We're running. We're running from something. We're all running. We're too. all we're sure we're all yeah. running to or from something. Yeah. Or we're trying to run up the ladder. Yeah. But it's not a running. Fuck. But they have they have a they have like a connection with the world that we have distanced ourselves from in a way. Like oh, for sure. You know, if like that's what I mean. A smart. Lot of city I don't I don't think smart. I don't think smart is brain development and knowledge like knowledge is smart but i think that there's an aspect of you know um stuff that we've lost because we've gained that oh yeah brain brain knowledge oh, I, I, yeah. there's an element of natural instinct natural oh 100 and, and, and we're yeah. constant and the more technology we we invent and put into our our lives the the further away we get right. get away from that stuff yeah. why do you think it's hard to get someone to go hunting because people yeah. don't feel it it doesn't, no, it's, it's, it's not like built. It's like a it, discipline it's, too. It's been built out yeah. of us, though, in a way. Yeah. It's, yeah. Or it fishing. Fishing is a good yeah. one. <laughs> Fishing's a, medi- Fishing's a good, a good medium. one. Yeah. Because you get that fight, too. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I got something yeah. that I'm fighting. And you're pulling and it you're up in from the, the depths, and then you can eat it. Yeah. More people no, are. I don't, I don't mean to make it sound like animals are genius. Yeah. Uh, I, I just mean, are. I just, I just, I'd sit out there and I'd be like, Birds are speaking in Morse code. They're not like they're they don't know the sound of a squirrel. They don't know what the squirrel is saying. Just like we don't know what a different culture is saying. But the but a, a, in in a in a in a, uh, a robin doesn't know what a cardinal is saying, and a blue jay doesn't know what a car, uh, cardinal is saying or a robin is saying because they have their own language. Are you sure? Just like just like humans do. It's not. I mean, do you know what someone from uh, Asia is saying? No. It's the same race, same species. But you don't know what they're saying. No, but I just figured all birds are. But the noise. Hey, wanna <laughs> fuck? Hey, wanna fuck? Could be, but same yeah, with humans. Yeah, where you, are you at? Where are you at? Same with humans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that that said, though, like if you think about it, it is interesting. Like, uh, they're not paying attention to the other birds like right. that. They're paying attention to you know, there's like the American birds and then there's the Asian birds and mm-hmm. then there's the African birds and then, and they all have their own little languages. And I've noticed that just by sitting out there, I'm like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I'm not trying to like make, like be like all si- philosoph- <laughs> philosophical, sure, philosophical about it. it, but I'm just like, damn, like they Something's actually, hit, yeah, right. yeah. Like these squirrels are playing. Like they're not just like right. being like, oh, that one's pissed at yeah, the other one. Yeah. They're that not, his territory. <laughs> they're not just being like, I, I don't even know what people think. I feel like it, it, it almost seems like it's a virtual reality. Nah. Real like nature seems like for people, it's like a virtual reality, something they view, observe. It can get trippy. Like, I mean, if you're yeah. if, if you are a city person and you've never gone hunting, yeah, try find somebody to take. You don't even have to hunt, but just hang out with them. Or go go with them and just kind of see what it's like to see what nature can really be yeah. like. I mean, you don't have to go that far. <laughs> like, I, I mean, you can leave, you can go out. I mean, we're in Kansas City. You can leave, you can go an hour and a half, and you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you're in the middle of it's nowhere. Nice. I mean, you're you like, can go Whoa. thirty minutes one way. You're in yeah, you don't have to go that. But I, yeah. mean, I mean, seriously, just an hour and a half, and you're literally mm-hmm. you're at a farm farmhouse here, 
his neighbor's a mile and yeah. a half that way. His miles a mile, you know, his neighbor's a mile and a half that way. It's all. It's refreshing. I think it's refreshing. I love it. It's really like, uh, why do you like uh, people vacation to like the mountains and you know whatnot? Like it's like they don't know why, but they do know why. It's, it's powerful. Just built into them. Nature's yeah. powerful. Yeah, the, the ocean's powerful. It's rejuvenating. Yeah, the ocean is equally like, and it's funny. Then that's like that's where like you have their two different kinds of people. Like you have your people that love like the ocean. There's and all kinds of beautiful people I mean, that love like the mountains, and then you have like your people that love like the flat land. There are. It's I, mean, really I was just funny. thinking about. It. I mean, prairie lands can be stunningly yeah. beautiful. It's insane. I th- I think that that place I went I would visit in Lawrence every day is my favorite place in the world. Nice. And it's it's and it's accessible. A Look at that right farm down the road. in Lawrence, Kansas. That's dope, man. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Because you get like a microcosm of how everything exists in a way. I got a you dope know? place I like northern Missouri. That's really cool. It's just got rolling hills yeah. and big forest, and it's just beautiful up there. Just Missouri has a cool uh, – it has a – I think it has a cooler landscape than Kansas. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not even not even debatable. It's, more, it's got more trees, and I've noticed that, like, the, the – I don't know. There's something different. Like, I can literally just be on a state line, and my family lives on state line, and I can, like, actually – you can tell the difference if you go, like, 20 – 10 20 minutes into Missouri mm-hmm. versus into Kansas like the actual like landscape yeah is different and you know, like it's weird i i never noticed that growing up hmm. as like a someone that Missouri's gnarly there. i mean yeah. we've got a lot i mean just go down go down south south southern missouri yeah. southeast missouri you start getting i mean you got the the ozark mountains down there you got yeah, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. You know, main, main it almost mountains. starts to become like the Appalachian area, mm-hmm. um, and then you got ro- the rolling hills of the north and the northeast, and then yeah. you got big woods everywhere. That's not the woods. That's the that's the big difference. Is mm-hmm. that Kansas is uh, they have we, like they start losing their woods, woods they're but starting there's to lose. not nearly the as more many, west you go, they yeah. start disappearing. Yeah. Especially like on the way, like my family has had a house uh, in Colorado as I've grown uh, grown up, and I I go there like two three times a year. I mean, it's like there's a strict point where you're just like, all right, uh, there's some trees, and then boom. You know it's what's like, crazy <laughs> is, is, is I don't know yeah. over ten thousand years or so ago, how gnarly it was. Maybe yeah. it's a little further than that, but it was like the Serengeti. Yeah. I mean, there was lions on there. Yeah. Wow. There, there, there was camels. That's nuts. Elephants. I mean, all that shit yeah. was there. Have you ever thought of? Um, what it have been like to be a to be like a pioneer? <laughs> I think about that every day. <laughs> there's not a, there's not a, not even when I'm hunting. You're like every <laughs> single day, I think about that. You're like, how the hell did these people walk through this shit? Like on how a did wagon, they walk we, wagon this? On, with wooden wheels, no, no roads at all. Like if you were an early explorer, I mean, like no, that would have been kind of cool. So many of them had to die. Oh yeah, of like, course. So many of them had to I, have of died. stupid shit too. Like just drinking the wrong <laughs> pond water eating, eating or a berry or twisting an ankle or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just something silly. Getting sick, getting a cold, Dude. getting pregnant. Shoot. Yeah. Having a baby, having a baby. I was like, my, my parents live, uh, like they have like land, um, and they have horses and stuff. And, um, they have woods, uh, they have like 40 or 50 acres of woods behind them. And I'll, you, you know, if you just sit on, I mean, when we were young, we used to play, all day like every single day in those woods and so like that's that's probably where i well, get yeah, some of that i get that too um yeah. but i like, love doing that growing up but like when you're sitting like if you sit on their deck now woods. and you look at the woods that's what we call them and you look at the woods and you're just like damn i remember what it was like it was like spider like it, even when we had a trail going through them there were spider webs like every single foot going across the trail there's like uh you know it's like the brush is spider like, webs oh. yeah, no, yeah the brush is like all the way up, around here the brush is like all the way up to your chest when you're a kid and then like you imagine like families walking through the woods to get somewhere like i don't think they were doing a whole been. lot of wood walking yeah but like okay so you go around them like 20 miles around them mm-hmm. like it's the same vibe <laughs> like you're you're going through like feet like it's it's nuts it's sticky. It's like hot, like it is today. Oh, like you're pregnant. Oh. It would have been weird. Oh yeah, it would have. Yeah, there would have been. Yeah, I think about that all the time. I love reading the books, and uh, there's there's a couple. 
There's some good books that at least kind of like some of the journals from back then that they turn into stories or just some of the journals themselves. Yeah. I'd have loved to hear like, it, is it like original, like authentic, like writing? Like I, stuff that the explorers wrote? Yeah, you can Damn. find some of that stuff. I do want to look at that. Yeah, look it up. We just look like Lewis and Clark, Interesting. you know? Interesting, yeah. I, mean, all that, I, always thought like, all that shit. I always thought it was like sugar coated. <laughs> no, there's it, some good because it, it wasn't yeah. that long ago. Yeah, there's definitely. <laughs> I know. Yeah, is that the funniest part? Yeah, yeah, that's the, the thing. It wasn't, wasn't long ago. At not all. that long ago. <laughs> not that many people ago. We're like what, three, four hundred years behind Europe. Yeah, maybe so, a little head in certain areas. Yeah, there's but. definitely. I mean, if you want to get lost, you know, in fact. You know, yeah. I'm thinking books and stuff like that. I, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff on YouTube. You yeah, I've been listening. What I've been doing is I've been, I, this is funny, but I've been like, uh, I'll just look up uh, audiobooks. That's what I listen to while painting. I think even podcasts can get distracting. So I like to listen to fiction. Um, not that <clears throat> that would be really cool to listen to. Um, but I'll listen, I'll just like steal like books off of YouTube and mm. I'll just listen to like oh, cool. the ripped audio. Oh, really? And yeah. And like, so I literally just finished in one month. I finished all three or all four Lord of the Rings books. Nice. And now I'm on like the Aragon books. If you ever heard of those the have... dragon book. Oh, okay. <laughs> but like, I got a badass nuts. series. You can, yeah. get, you can get lost in red rising. Okay. I'll look That's book number one. It's okay. There was three books and then big books pretty big yeah. they're, 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 that's, that's what i mean <laughs> so good so 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 good. and the fourth one i haven't i haven't read the fourth one yet that just came out this year yeah do you 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 read like i like physically? to read but i will do that audible i'll do, I'll, I'll mix it up sometimes yeah. i'll read of it and then you can pick it back up on the audible side that's good I, i've been like I, I just have to like uh i've noticed that like i just don't have time for reading as much like physical and audible's great because yeah. like i'm if i'm gonna be spending that time doing mm-hmm. anything i'll just bring my sketchbook and yeah. just work on that and like then i'll like just listen to the book the good like one the, the, thing. the thing about the red rising one the act the voice actor is phenomenal really he's is so it, good it's inaudible yeah i need i just need to get an audible account how much is well that? you know what you can get this on the this is on, i got this off the library okay the library has an app Oh, and you really? can get download Audible books for free. Oh no! Way. On your on on your I need to start app. doing that because like uh, the YouTube videos get like pulled mm-hmm. really quickly. Right? Yeah, and yeah. So like all, I listen to all of Lord of the Rings, and now I go back and like a third of them are pulled, so I can't like re-listen. That happened to, to me again. too. Yeah. Um, but yeah. That's but yeah, check it out. Yeah, you have to oh, check well. out the the library I'll app. Write that down. What is it called? Red. What that one is called? Overdrive. OneDrive. Let me take a look. My phone's gonna die here very Red, shortly. You're good. Red Rising, and then the um, just the what library is it? Whatever, whatever. They're all the local. Lo- do you live in Missouri or Kansas? I live in Missouri. I guess I, I they're live, all the I same. It's the all just roads. just the mid mid continental. What is it? I think it's called One Drive. I can't find. Okay. I don't know. I have it somewhere. I uh, I'll look it up. I'll just type in library. Yeah. Overdrive. It's Overdrive. called Overdrive. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would be nice to just... Like, they're probably just... And it looks like that's for... right up there is the what it looks like. Okay. Just a blue and a an O. Okay. Anybody out there, yeah, it's free. It's it, it's amazing. You can get... uh, Yeah, audiobooks on there. And uh, what's the other book you can get? Yeah. The e-books. E-books, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're, like, dying for any way for people to read because... I, you know, it's awesome. I got the library. <laughs> I can walk to my library. Really? It's right at the end of the street. That's and nice. you can go get movies. Really, you, I can go up there and get all of the, uh, like the stuff you used to. Uh, um, Game of Thrones. I can Re- get all oh, of those really? up there for free. They have Is new stuff. Really yeah, they free? get new stuff that <laughs> drops every single week. You can go up there and just get it for Is free. It sad that I didn't know the library was free. No, it's not sad. <laughs> I think it, a lot of people don't know. It's not free, buddy. You're paying for it in your taxes. Yeah. So take yes. take use of it. That's I mean, go up there. Is, get Is it government? Government run. Some yeah. I totally forgot it's, about that. They're probably dying to get that stuff out there. Yeah, I mean, I stopped Game of Thrones because I had to. Uh, I had the box set and didn't have an HBO, so I had the box set for the first three seasons. There you go. Go get four, four, five, six, seven for free. Dang. At the I library. Didn't finish it all. We're, so <laughs> yeah, we're wait. At, I'm sure they sell every single book and audiobook in the library. That's why they do it on. I'm piecing it together now. Mm-hmm. That's why they have a free app. Yeah. See, buddy. Okay. I don't have to steal. It's it. weird. No, the app is weird. Yeah. Um, because. They only have certain amount amount of copies 
of audible books right so you have to wait your turn so they probably rent out like the actual which is one. weird because no because it's it, 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 it yeah because once it's available it's still on your phone it's on the app right but you have to wait you for it wait. which it doesn't make sense it sounds like, Kim, it, it, uh, it's like all, kindle it's all yeah i don't know i don't know yeah technology is cool it is cool it's a good thing and it's a bad thing um <laughs> you uh you were kind enough to be an to get here an hour later than we had first agreed on upon yeah. and we are over an hour i know you have some things going on tonight so yeah. kind of what was it charity or something uh it's so there's a there's a organization that i'm a part of um it's called fam it's a little plug for fam okay. yeah um, please but plug it's away for, yeah. but it's like a it's fam. called for our for artistic minds uh-huh. um and they've been getting big like the last meeting it started like I I can't remember if it's a year ago, but it was definitely like within the last few years they started, and there was like four of them meeting uh, once a month, mm-hmm. and you know just in the last half year it's gotten up to like this last meeting there were like eighty five maybe 90 people there is that local and this is just a local type thing or what? Uh, yeah so it's like a they just got nonprofit. Um, status um because they were kind of building up to that um but they're they basically they're it's like a uh, i don't mean they're my friend they're my, like my, all my art friends um okay. but like they uh, it's any creative <clears throat> discipline so it's like we've got like mixed martial artists we've got like painters actors modelers uh model models gotcha. <laughs> uh you know um fashion design like it's it's supposed to be any any like um you got any uh, podcasters up in there and uh, yeah there's street wave podcast i've heard of that um yeah they they're they do street wave and then they do a couple of other uh like mini side podcasts as well um so he's in there uh yeah musician it's nuts and um and so and it's like just like really like a thing where we just meet every fourth sunday or every first sunday and just collaborate talk uh we always usually have like a performance um or like some sort of not activity because it's not grade school but some sort of engaging um element and then we'll have like a panel discussion or a group discussion and then it's just kind of like you know social anybody can go uh yeah anybody uh as as long as you're not just like going to like shamelessly plug something i was gonna like, say oh that's yeah. funny that's, that's I, I didn't think of that i was thinking as long as you're not going to clout chase no i mean that's i mean I don't do that honestly either. it's really open to anybody um but the the only thing is that they don't want like you know people coming just to pitch things and then leave oh, yeah, that's disgusting. Uh, they want you to be like part of the community because it's like the original the guy that started it is now um he's trying to like back off a little bit so that like it can be almost member run in a okay. way. Um, but yeah, they're doing a, a fundraiser right now um, because they have a lot of artists now that they're kind of almost in a way like agenting, um, if that makes sense. Like, okay. They kind of like, if you need some, something to collaborate with or someone to, uh, it can kind of connect you now that there's so many people. Um, so they're doing like uh, at up down and the crossroads. It's right by where on I live. Sunday, or is that uh, right, right now? now. Yeah. Oh, that's right now. It was three to ten, and right it's right by where I live. But it's like um, they're just doing like the every coin sale tonight is donated to. Oh, that's fucking fam. cool. And yeah, so I'm gonna go. So how can how support. can people get information so, on this if they want to go? Um, like, I didn't know. So I don't know if I don't know if uh, it'll be too late to make it tonight. No, I don't so. mean tonight. Okay, this, but this yeah, episode wanna, won't be up for a while. Go. I'm sorry for people in general for the future that are listening to this. So let me make sure um, what it's called. It, <clears throat> it, it, it's I always just know it as fam, but it is for artistic minds is the Instagram account. Okay. Um, and then if you just follow them, uh, they'll post like the flyer per month. Um, and for then they artistic have, like, minds, mm-hmm, and then they have like different little like. Um, you know, small things that they'll go on, and they they're pretty active on their stories about promoting certain things and uh, promoting the artists that uh, you know and creatives that are involved in it. And um, that's cool. So they try and keep it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because there's a lot of really like I'm following them, following <laughs> them right now. <laughs> there's a lot of really hey, they just got to follow. Um, there's a lot of really like developed art organizations in Kansas City, but this is like um, Carnell, the guy that runs it. Um, and Jess and um, Derek, um, they and Kyle, 
Uh, Shout out to you guys. <laughs> but they, uh, they really, what, it, what was I just saying? Just about the, the collective group of, of the fam. Yeah. Um, oh, dang, I just blinked. It's all good. How um, people can get information, what they're doing. Just just how people can get information yeah, about yeah. it, really. I mean, they just, just really want it to be kind of like, you know, member, member right. right. And they want to kind of build awareness. Um, oh, what I was going to say is that they're kind of like, their concept is for it to be more like a little bit of a renaissance kind of thing or mm-hmm. like a underground thing where you don't have to be a fine art painter to yeah. be part of it or you don't have to be a, a little more inclusive wheel sculptor to be a part of okay. it you can be anything and um you know there's as long as you're some kind of creative yeah. artistic type I mean, it doesn't even have to be artistic like model like modeling is artistic but i mean okay the photographer is probably the most creative part of it and and so like there's a lot of photographers videographers models but i'd like say there's some like, art yeah there's definitely i there's, mean you i'd have say to there's be, i think you have to be artistic to be a model yeah but it's it's different than like the yeah. the generic oh yeah approach. for sure that's what i'm saying and, yeah. and so like that's what that's what their whole goal is to like bring the people that are uh different from like the stereotypical fine art stuff mm-hmm. out of the fringes and start to like include them and have them collaborate like i know that one of the people's like just randomly got into actually Jess. She's one of the heads. She just randomly got into like body painting oh, but, cool. and she's a painter, but she would have never considered a body as a canvas until like one of the models was just like talking about collaborating. Oh, and then cool. the photographer was like, Oh, like I'll shoot it. Nice. And so it's, yeah, it's interesting. Right on. It's a cool, it's a, it, for me, it's a really good way to just to build like a, a, a network of people that are similar 20 to 50 age group. And, um, similar mindsets. Mm-hmm. Um, that's so cool. Different disciplines. I want to have to check that out. Yeah, and it's sure. on Sundays. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. It's Sunday at six. Those and are my podcast till, at six p.m. Yeah. Oh, it perfect. Goes, it goes till six. Um, you know, it goes till yeah. I don't know. First I Sunday. Stay till first August. Sunday of every month. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. too late for. But so I have to wait till August. Yeah. Beautiful. Good. But it's it's very diverse. Like there's more people that do non painting stuff than there are yeah painters. it sounds I mean, really cool there's probably only like three or four painters i mean nice potentially i can't wait to check I don't it out speak for the group but yeah yeah versus mm-hmm. the other groups that are like 85 percent painters yeah you know oh that's so, cool yeah uh so you got anything you want to kind of wrap up kind of tell people i mean this is your floor T- do what you want pitch what you want to pitch say what you want to say here i don't tell- really have anything i mean you can just follow i do a daily drawing on instagram and doodle dude uh, Facebook. art yeah it's a, I, ch- I switched it to art because it's a shorter word <laughs> yeah uh, so it's just at doodle dude art on instagram it's doodle, doodle dude, dude love uh, it doodle dude llc dude is spelled d-o-o-d it's doodle dude llc on uh facebook i have an actual business so um and then um you know other than that i mean just you just following along is more than enough where can um, people can you do you sell stuff yeah so i have a website at www.doodledude.com again dude is spelled d-o-o-d i have my portfolio all of my paintings are up there um, i love this i'm gonna show yeah i have show all this <laughs> little this little dude hickey here you brought um, me is beautiful i can't wait to i'm gonna get it framed <laughs> and i'm gonna hang it in here somewhere um, but yeah i mean all of the uh, all of the i have like those drawings all of my daily drawings i'm on daily drawing 820 and I have them all categorized on my website so that you can really go in and find what you're looking for. I have all my paintings. I have my murals on there, the parlor one included. Um, and then I also have a full shop. So I sell like uh, I have probably I have prints of like 10, 15 paintings on there. I have prints of probably 10, 15 of those on there, just hand selected. Ones. Guy Fee, are you on? um, yeah, I do have a print of that on there. I sell apparel. Um, I have coloring books. That shirt? Yeah. I, do, I design my own apparel. I have a business partner with, uh, in terms of the apparel side of things. And, um, I just really like use it as a platform to kind of like, you know, if I can't get an art, if I, if, if I can't get a, someone from the general public to buy an original piece, which I don't expect them to, because it's pricey, they can always buy prints and apparel and gu- and stuff that, you know, is catered more towards their interest anyway. Uh, yeah. Like appar- appar- anyone will wear apparel. So you're going to do a Joe Rogan. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's literally on my to like on my to do list to do a Joe Rogan uh, painting. Um, so because I want to get I want to get it, like have it be like, <clears throat> fully fleshed so like it's a painting. So even if he doesn't like see it because I'm DM him, which he probably wouldn't check. Um, I have like prints and I can sell the original. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can do. Yeah, that's the good thing about being like 
uh, a commercial artist uh, or have commercial art training is I'm I'm trained to sell yeah my product you let me know when that was for sale which is, uh, yeah for sure well, I mean it's <laughs> I, still, <laughs> this, I, I just charge by square inch to keep the price <laughs> yeah <laughs> to keep nice. the price like subjective <laughs> and not like not like be like oh well yeah but I will have prints of it too yeah but yeah so, my man it's really it's all about all I mean this other was than awesome. that I have nothing to ask we could have d- easily gone more you yeah. asked earlier how long I go I said usually an hour totally I should have told you sometimes I go three yeah uh, this easily could have gone three because we just did an hour and a half. Yeah, didn't feel like it. And we <laughs> spoke for what thirty minutes beforehand. So yeah, I don't want to take up your time. Go to your fundraiser. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to take. Uh, can I get a fist bump here before we get out of sure. here? Appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, this was uh, this was fun. First official interview. So. We'll get it out there. <laughs> your voice is out there. Thank you, sir. I hope Appreciate you get all kinds of good DMs from the ladies I'll be, out there. I'll be using it for my. Bet. All right, my man. (laughs) Peace out, everybody. Love you all. Thank you, guys.